Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah Ramadan Kareem and welcome to the 15th uh, juzo of the Quran. Today we will cover two great ayat, almost two great ayat. Um, the chapter 17, Surah Al Isra, comes in 111 ayat. Um, and then we will cover the big part of Surah Al Kahf, chapter number 18, that comes in 110 ayat, but we will cover just uh, two thirds of it till ayah 74. So let's take a look at these two great surahs. Surah Al Isra, chapter number 17, is named after the incident of Al Isra wal Mi'raj. Al Isra, the trip that Prophet Muhammad uh, made from uh, Mecca to Jerusalem and then the Mi'raj from Jerusalem to the heaven and that is uh, documented in this surah, Surah Al-Isra. Surah Al-Isra is Surah Makki. It's like the last Makki surah that was revealed and it talks in total about uh, how every soul is responsible for themselves, how the it, it just talks about the maturity of a Muslim community before it starts shifting toward the Madani Quran and it talks about the Tawheed and Al Aqeedah but in a more robust uh, principles than the surahs uh, in Mecca that emphasize, the, this surah emphasize how the Muslims should uh, do some uh, ibadat because now the Muslims have been Muslims for a longer period of time, although it's a Makki Quran. So it has kind of in between the Makki and Madani Quran. Surah Al Isra starts with Subhan al ladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al harami ila al masjid al aqsa al ladhi barakna hawla linuriyahu min ayatina innahu huwa al sami' al basir. The first ayah. So Subhan al ladhi. Subhan. Praises to Allah, who asra. Asra is a verb that moving at night. Now asra bi abdihi laylan. Laylan is the adverb at night. Now the question is, why to say the verb that I walked at night and then use the adverb laylan at night? That is a clear repeatance. So there is two reasons for that. Asra that he started walking but when it said Laylan that confirms that the whole Isra happened and finished Laylan the second reason Laylan has the Tanween the Tanween adds kind of definite to the word so it's a specific night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored the Prophet Muhammad sallam by giving him the Isra wal Mi'raj so that's the first ayah. The ayat 4 to 8 talks about Bani Israel. And this surah has another name that's mentioned in the hadith. It's called Surah Bani Israel. Although Bani Israel are mentioned in some surahs much more than Surah Al Isra, but Surah Al Isra is called Bani Israel. Why is that? Because in ayat 4 to 8, it talks about how Bani Israel will do as a society, as a community, not as a religion, as a country, if you will. It talks about the first time that they had a country, that when it was established with, with Dawood alayhi salam, with Sulaiman, and after that, when Nabuchad Nasser, the, the Babylon, came from uh, Iraq, and then they destroyed that uh, country, and that they will have a second uh, time that they will have a society built that's mentioned in the ayat 4 to 8. In ayah number 9, In هَذَا الْقُرْآنَ يَهْدِي لِلَّتِي هِيَ أَقْوَمْ This Qur'an guide to the best possible way. There is no doubt that it, it guides to the best even if you don't see that. وَيُبَشِّرُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And brings the good news to the mu'mineen, to the believers. Which mu'mineen? 
الذين يعملون الصالحات who does the good deeds أن لهم أجرا كبيرا this Quran brings the guidance and reminds the mu'mineen that you do the good deeds that you are rewarded big time with these uh, deeds that is a concept that Surah Al-Isra came to, to just make it very clear ayah number 11 is a very important ayah about the dua وَيَدْعُ الْإِنسَانُ بِالشَّرِّ دُعَاءَهُ بِالْخَيْرِ وَكَانَ الْإِنسَانُ عَجُولًا that the insan would make dua for himself or for herself that is sharr, that is bad for them but they think that it's good and the insan, the human is always ajul, is in rush first of all when you make a dua, you should not be rushing the dua. You just make the dua. It's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when to achieve that dua. Second of all, how can I ask for something bad for me? Like when you are specific, be careful when you're making the dua. Oh Allah, please give me money. You don't know if giving you money is good or bad. Oh Allah, please make me uh, accepted in this uh, uh, school. You don't know if going to this school is good for you. So the proper dua is always conditional for the Muslim. Or it's khair of the akhirah. Not the dunya. And if you have to make dua, there is nothing wrong of making dua for the dunya. But you, you make the dua like, Oh Allah, if me going to school XYZ is good for me, in dunya wa akhirati, then iqsimhu li. Make it my, uh, goes my way. But don't say, oh Allah, please, I just work very hard to be accepted in, in school ABC. You don't know if it's, if it's good for you, or if owning a car is, is good for you, or if the bank agrees on the loan. You don't know. So leave it to Allah, but always rely on Allah, and make your dua based on that. So that is a great ayah to remember, that not to make dua for ourselves, and it ends up to be sharr, not great for us. Ayah number... Ayah number 16 is very important ayah, just like all the ayat, but it's also uh, interpreted sometimes in a wrong way. وَإِذَا أَرَدْنَا أَن نُهْلِكَ قَرْيَةً أَمَرْنَا مُتْرَفِيهَا فَفَسَقُوا فِيهَا فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهَا الْقَوْلِ فَدَمَّرْنَاهَا تَدْمِيرًا Allah states, when does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command to destroy a town? When he command the people of that town to follow the goodness and they decline. فَفَسَقُوا فِيهَا They say, oh, thank you Allah, we don't want to follow that commandment. فَحَقَّ عَلَيْهَا الْقَوْلِ Now they deserve the punishment. فَدَمَّرْنَاهَا تَدْمِيرًا And some people, because of the translation or the interpretation, they, they say that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command the town to be uh, excessive and to be mutrafeen. That's not how it is read in Arabic. أَمَرْنَا مُتْرَفِيهَا We command them with the good. فَفَسَقُوا فِيهَا The فَسَقُوا فِيهَا They did not obey they did not follow the commandment and that is how the ayah explains in a very short one sentence the how to avoid the punishment and that came in another ayah if you remember in, in previously in surah hud but now it's just very briefly telling you what's the end game because this surah isra is talking about the punishment and the bushra the good news and the bad news to warn us from the bad end. Ayat 23 and 24 are famous ayat talking about birril walidain, righteousness to parents, and it is a commandment of Allah. Allah says in a very strong language, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah had commanded qada he decided that you should not worship but allah and then he linked birr al-walidain 
good to the parents to not having partners with Allah. Like Allah commanded and decided that He is the only God. To excel in your relation with your parents, subhanAllah. When, one, uh, when they get older, either one of them or both of them, فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ Like do not even sigh to them like even if you obey that that is not from Birr al-Walidin وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا That's more like to, to, to raise your voice over their voice وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا Just show them and tell them only good وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Be soft and down to them always and show them mercy وَقُلْ رَبِّ رَحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِي صَغِيرًا Make dua to them that they took care of you when you were helpless, when you were very young and small and you could not take care of yourself. These two great ayat, I encourage you even to memorize them, not just to read them in Arabic and in, in English. And they, with these two ayat, starts a lot of good advices in Surah Al-Isra, because as I said, Surah Al-Isra is late. Makki talk about some of the day-to-day -day ahkam that came later in some su surahs Madani, and some of it came in Surah Al-An'am as well. So I don't want to read the ayah 29 to 38, but read them, they give great advices like do not spend much and do not be cheap and something specific. So that tells you that it got closer to regulations, but most of these things are very basics that came in Surat Al-An'am. But now the occasion here is to tell you this is the way to the Haq, this is the way to go to the Jannah and read the ayah 29 to 38 in English that will explain a lot of these ayat to you. And in ayah 71 يَوْمَ نَدْعُوا كُلَّ أُنَاسٍ بِإِمَامِهِمْ When each people, this is in the judgment day, comes with their imam. And I want to clarify, I saw in some tafsirs in English only that imam is the leader or their prophet. Yes, there is minor tafsirs that think that the imam as the, their prophet, like Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is our imam and each uh, ummah will come with their imam, but most tafsirs think the imam is the kitab. In Quran, imam comes as kitab multiple times and Surah Yasin is one of those examples, but that means that in the judgment day, the people will come with their kitab, with their book, and the remains of the ayah explains, فَمَنْ أُوْتِيَ كِتَابَهُ بِيَمِينِهِ Whoever gets their book in their right hand, those are Ashab al-Yameen, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make, make us all from Ashab al-Yameen, فَأُولَئِكَ يَقْرَأُونَ كِتَابَهُمْ وَلَا يُظْلَمُونَ فَتِيلًا Those will be reading their book and enjoying reading it, and they will sure not have any injustice, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among them. And then ayah 79 talks about the extra salah at night, the tahajjud salah. وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكَ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا مَحْمُودًا One level in the Jannah is called Maqam Mahmud. That Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is promised that Maqam Mahmud. So, we always need to pray tahajjud, extra. Other than the fard and the sunnah, tahajjud is the nafila that usually is at night. You can do nafil at any time, but this specifically at night, so that's tahajjud. And then ayah 85, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الرُّوحِ They're asking you, what is the soul? The soul that, that makes the alive people living. قُلِ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّي It is from Allah's knowledge. We don't know what it is. وَمَا أُوْتِيْتُمْ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا The knowledge that you have gained is just little bit. Not much. 
and then I'll take you to ayah 104. وَقُلْنَا مِنْ بَعْدِهِ لِبَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ اسْكُنُوا الْأَرْضِ We told Bani Israel after that to live in the earth. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ جِئْنَا بِكُمْ لَفِيفًا If it's close to end, we will bring you all together. Subhanallah al-Azim. And Ayah 106. وَقُرْآنًا فَرَقْنَاهُ لِتَقْرَأَهُ عَلَى النَّاسِ عَلَى مُكْثِ وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا And the Qur'an that was revealed on multiple occasions over a period of time على مكث on a relaxed period of time وَنَزَّلْنَاهُ تَنْزِيلًا Every time the word تَنْزِيل mentioned with the Qur'an that emphasized that it came as multiple revelation not as a whole Qur'an and the last ayah, the last ayah I want to mention, it's the one before last actually, it's 110. قُلِ دُعُوا اللَّهَ أَوِ دُعُوا الرَّحْمَانِ Emphasize making dua, and when you make dua, you make it toward Allah. But the ayah says to Allah, or to Ar-Rahman, using the name Ar-Rahman, that is another great name of Allah. And I have a video about each name of Allah, Allah and Ar-Rahman, on my channel if you like to learn more about what each name means, but to most scholars, Allah and the Rahman are the two names of Allah, and the rest of the 99 names are more of names, but they're adjectives and names, subhanAllah. So make dua to Allah or Rahman, or the rest of the ayah make with any name of the great names of Asma Allah Al-Husna. With that, Surah Al-Isra will end, and uh, beautiful surah, read it in Arabic and enjoy reading it in the language that you understand. Surah Al-Kahf, chapter 18 in the Quran, is a Makki surah that was revealed when the non-Muslims, Quraysh, went to the Jewish and they told them that we want to challenge Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu to show to the people that he's not telling the truth. So the Jewish told them a few stories that they know from the Torah and they told uh, the Quraysh, the Makkis, ask him if he's the prophet he should know and if he doesn't know then people will know that he's making this up. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said that I will ask and I will get back to you, to Quraysh, but he did not or he forgot to say inshallah. So the Wahi did not come down to Prophet for like 40 days and that was a tough time for Prophet Muhammad So that was a fitna that Quraysh started. So the main topic for Surah Al-Kahf talking about the types of fitnas that we face in our life. Story after story. Surah Al-Kahf tells four or five stories. Starts with the story of Ashab Al-Kahf the people of the cave that the surah is named after them, that is the first fitna. And then the second is Sahib al jannatain the story of the, per the person who owned the two gardens, the two heavens, jannatain but it means the garden that is full of fruits. And then the third one is the story of Musa alayhi salam and al-abd al-salih or the uh, great servant of Allah or Al-Khadr and then his name is Al-Khadr and then the fourth story is Dhul Qarnayn or Alexander the Great and there is after those four stories quick mention of the story of Iblis that was mentioned a couple of times in other surahs so let's look at each story of these stories Today we will cover the part of Surah Al-Kahf that falls in the 15th Juzo from the beginning till Ayah 74. But Surah Al-Kahf has 110 Ayah, so we will cover three of these four stories that I mentioned. So let's take a look. Surah Al-Kahf starts in the first Ayah with الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا Alhamdulillah, it's one of five surahs 
starts with Alhamdulillah. The very first surah in the Quran, Surah Al-Fatiha, starts with Alhamdulillah. And Surah Al-Kahf is one of those five surahs that starts with Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah for the ni'mah of Al-Kitab. This book that does not have any wrong in it, subhanAllah. When you have a book that you know that does not have a 0.01% of wrong, that is a great ni'mah of Allah because it is the source that the whole surah is going to talk about. Ayah number six. Before starting with the stories, it says, فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاخِعٌ نَفْسَكَ عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ إِنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam how sometimes he's, he's devastated, frustrated from people that they don't believe in this hadith, in this book that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. And then in ayah number 9 is the start of the story, the first story in the surah, the story of the people of the cave, Ashab al-Kahf. أَمْ حَسِبْتَ أَنَّ أَصْحَابَ الْكَهْفِ وَالرَّقِيمِ كَانُوا مِنْ آيَاتِنَا عَجَبًا Al-Raqim is the name of the town that they lived in. Ashab al-Kahf, they were named the people of the cave because they ran into the cave. The ayat 10 to 12 tells you the whole story in a very short recap mode, like 10 to 12, that this story is 1, 2, 3. You know, it's very beautiful if you want to read 10, 11, 12, just to, to see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling the story like nobody else. And then after that, spotlights on the story and teaching us details about it. And after that, the story goes on and how they uh, struggled. The story of Ashab al-Kahf, the people of the cave, is the first fitna, the first story. The fitna of the deen, the fitna of the religion that those people believed in something that is not allowed for them to believe in. This is happening in, 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 in the war today where some people are kicked out of the, the, their country or asked to believe in something else or they are forced to believe in something that they don't believe. Those are just a few people that believed in Allah and the king in that town did not allow anyone to believe in anything but what he believes in. The Ayah 16 وَإِذِ اَعْتَزَلْتُمُوهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ If you decided to leave them and what they worship except Allah فَأْوُوا إِلَى الْكَهْفِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them toward the cave. What would happen in the, in the cave? يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ رَبُّكُمْ مَنْ رَحْمَتِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will spread his mercy. وَيُهَيِّئْ لَكُمْ مِرْفَقًا I want to emphasize the Quranic expression how Allah guided them to a cave, to a, a, a narrow place, to a very uh, tight place and then says يَنْشُرْ لَكُمْ Allah will spread the mercy and will prepare place a very comfortable place subhanallah so things are not like how they seem it's about subhanallah how it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well he knows everything and in the next ayah is a famous ayah about how when they went to sleep and they stayed asleep for 309 years how the sun وَتَرَى الشَّمْسَ إِذَا طَلَعَتْ تَزَاوَرُ عَنْ كَهْفِهِمْ ذَاتَ الْيَمِينَ When the sun comes up, it's like the sun skips them in a way. Okay? So, in most tafsir says that the sun skips them, and after when it goes to the sunset, it doesn't pass them. And some scholars think that is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want them to wake up. Although if Allah doesn't want them to wake up, they won't wake up as we know. But there is also newer scholars that now after Muslims have seen how the sun uh, rotates, especially close to the polar places like Norway in the north and uh, the Arctic area in the uh, south uh, pole, they started thinking that probably Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meant for the sun that it remain 
in the same position and it did not go up and down Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did that for them but that's just I wanted to hint I'm not a big fan of of the theory of applying everything in the Quran to science but I'm just saying this as I wanted to highlight it so you aware of what does it mean that the sun has uh, to skip them in a way or to stay hanging to their right and to their left doesn't the sun go up and down so that's eye number 17 and in the same ayah uh, I'm still in ayah 17 the end of the ayah مَن يَهْدِ اللَّهُ فَهُوَ الْمُهْتَدُ وَمَن يُضْلِلْ فَلَنْ تَجِدَ لَهُ وَلِيًّا مُرْشِدًا whoever Allah provide guidance they are guided so this comes in the ayah after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them to the cave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided them to be in which position and then he took care of them he made them fall fell asleep and that was a mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to them that they were not found and this story is a great story teaching us how to stand up for the rights and for the fitna of the religion the religion is something we should not compromise on after this uh, story ends immediately in ayah number 23 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu with the occasion of this revelation that he didn't say inshallah he says wala taqulanna li shay'in inni fa'ilun dhalika ghada illa an yasha Allah do not say anything that you will do in the future except you're saying inshallah illa an yasha Allah only if Allah wants this to happen so that's great teaching and those two ayat 17 and 23 kind of tell you the whole meaning of the whole surah or at least this part of the surah the second story of surah al-kahf starts from ayah 32 till 39 almost actually after 39 but it starts with 32 where it says وَضْرِبْ لَهُمْ مَثَلَ الرَّجُلَيْنِ جَعَلْنَا لِأَحَدِهِمَا جَنَّتَيْنِ مِنْ أَعْنَابِ Take example, the man that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him lots of wealth. He gave him two heavens. Heavens mean gardens that are full of fruit. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described those gardens that he had, how, how rich he was. And then in ayah 35, وَدَخَلَ جَنَّتَهُ وَهُوَ ظَالِمْ he entered his his jannah his his garden that Allah described as a jannah when he was unjust to whom unjust to himself what does he say this will never this doesn't seem like it it would go away he did kufr he said he doesn't believe in the judgment day and wala irruditu ila rabbi and if that happens and i go back to allah la ajid la ajidanna khayran minha munqalaba i would find even better jannah than this subhanallah that's the arrogance when you have wealth and you think that you got that for something special that you have and then his friend is is debating with him قال له صاحبه وهو يحاوره اكفرت بالذي خلقك you just commit kufr till the end and he says that uh, if you have said in ayah 39 that is a great ayah وَلَوْلَا إِذْ دَخَلْتَ جَنَّتَكَ when you have entered your jannah I wish you have said قُلْتَ مَا شَاءَ اللَّهُ لَا قُوَّةَ إِلَّا بِاللَّهِ some people when they see something beautiful they say Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad but the Quran says when you see something beautiful for you or for somebody else, the Sunnah is to say, ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. إن تراني أنا أقل من كما لو ولد. Look at me. That he's telling his friend, I don't have anything from what you have. So you should have recognized the nama and the wealth, and you say, ما شاء الله لا قوة إلا بالله. And then the story continues till the nama is gone, and then. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that he did not have anything, he lost everything. I want to highlight after each story in Surah Al-Kahf, 
there is like a few ayat, kind of the reflection from that story that we could learn from. Ayat 45, 46, and 47. This whole hayat dunya is just like a ma, a rain that came from the sky. فَاخْتَلَطَ بِهِ نَبَاتُ الْأَرْضِ That was mixed with what's left on the ground. فَأَصْبَحَ هَشِيمًا تَدْرُوهُ الْرِيَاءِ And that, that dry thing that was on the ground just got lost with the wind. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving an example of this hayat dunya is like nothing. So we should not be so invested in the hayat dunya in our jobs, in our money, in our wealth, subhanallah. And ayah 46, so talking about the, the things that in Hayat dunya that we love most are the inheritance, the children, and the money, and that's what we love. And, and in the next ayah, and Allah says, وَالْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ خَيْرٌ عِنْدَ رَبِّكَ ثَوَابًا وَخَيْرٌ أَمَلًا But that's not lasting. الْبَاقِيَاتُ الصَّالِحَاتُ The things that last. In some hadith they say Al-Baqiyat Al-Salihat are Subhanallah wa Bihamdi Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim So Tasbih, even saying Tasbih is better than the whole Ni'ma of Al-Hayat Al-Dunya And of course Ayah 47 is the answer is the answer to 45 and 46 How in the Judgment Day it will be tough and the mountains will be moving So the, this whole Hayat Al-Dunya doesn't make any value or any sense So the whole lesson from this story is not to be invested in hayat dunya and to remember al-akhirah and to work for al-akhirah where things really matters the story of iblis iblis is the shaitan that the story is mentioned a couple of times as we covered previously but in ayah number 50 in surah al-kaf وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ تَسْجُدُوا لِآدَمَ فَسَجَدُوا إِلَّا إِبْلِيسَ كَانَ مِنَ الْجِنِّ فَفَسَقَ عَنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّهِ أَفَتَتَّخِذُونَهُ وَذُرِّيَّتَهُ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِي وَهُمْ لَكُمْ عَدُوٌّ بِئْسَ لِلظَّالِمِينَ بَدَلًا The story sounds like repeatance of what was mentioned but it's not the story says the, when we told the angels to bow down to, uh, to Adam, they did except Iblis was min al jinn, he was from the jinn, fafasaka an amr rabbi. So, why to mention the story of Iblis here? We would understand the, con the, the context. First of all, this surah talks about the fitna. So, Iblis is the greatest fitna that we face, so he is mentioned. Second, it focused that Iblis himself fell for the fitna. He thought that he's better than Adam. So he fell for that fitna himself. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Illa Iblis, except Iblis, kana min al -jin. he was from the jinn. What did he do? Fafasaqa an amri rabbi. He did not fulfill the commandment of Allah. He was arrogant in a way. Afatattakhidunahu wa dhurriyatahu awliya. You take him and his, his hears. Your, your buddies, then you fall for the fitna and follow the person who fell for the fitna, you complete the chain, they are your enemy. That's a bad exchange for the mu'mineen, for the believers. And the next highlight is Ayah 56 that states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the prophets mubashireen wa mundireen. The job of all prophets, including Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is mubashireen wa mundireen, is to bring the uh, reward and to warn us from the punishment. So that is kind of the highlight that covers the topic. Why is this whole surah? Is the bushra and to warn us from the punishment. And that's about it for the whole surah. The third story in the surah, and the last one that I will cover today, there is five stories, but actually four stories and the story of a beast that I just covered. But the third of the four stories is the story of Musa alayhi salam. And this is different than all the stories of Musa. Musa alayhi salam, 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if he is the most knowledgeable person on earth and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said no and Musa was surprised and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Musa that if he makes a trip to certain place he will find uh, the most knowledgeable person on earth that was Al-Khadr who most scholars believe he was a prophet but not a messenger uh, as Al-Khadr uh, or as people say Al-Abd Al-Salih so uh, the name is not mentioned in the Quran but most scholars refer to him as Al-Khadr Ayah number 60 is the start of the story وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُبًا Musa took his uh, guide or his servant with him that is that guide is also uh, will become a prophet and he's Yosha bin Nun that's mentioned in the Torah like Yeshua but we believe his name is Yosha as mentioned in the Ahadith that's al Fata or Musa's servant so Musa told him that I'm not going to stop till I reach where the two seas or the sea and the river connects and then I will keep going for Hukuba like many and many years because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told him to do a trip to take certain way and he will not give up that is the spirit when you get the commandment of Allah or the guidance of Allah if Allah tells you that if you go that way you will find something you never stop subhanallah and then the story goes where they uh, lose their fish and they see the miracle of Allah and then they go back and that's where they find Al-Khadr alayhi salam Musa will ask him that Musa wants to follow him in ayah 66 قَالَ لَهُ مُوسَى هَلْ أَتَّبِعُكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُعَلِّمَنِ مِمَّا عُلِّمْتَ رُشْدًا رُشْدًا I want you to teach me Rushda, the proper use of knowledge Rushda. So it's not just knowledge, but to put it in the good way. So do you agree that I follow you and I learn from what you have learned, Rushda? And then he gets the answer in the next ayah. إِنَّكَ لَن تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا You will not be patient on what I will do. And then there is a few lessons here. Actually, we can speak hours about this story alone. But just to make it short, there is how Al-Khadr he was very patient with Musa and he tried to find excuses for Musa after he said that he would not be patient he said I don't blame you in Ayah 68 that that how can you pay, pay, how can you be patient on something you don't know subhanallah and Musa insisted and then they went in the trip and then Musa complained three times the first time his teacher Al-Khadr just reminded him and then he said I will not repeat it and the second time he reminded him that he was not patient Musa said that in ayah 76 قَالَ إِن سَأَلْتُكَ عَنْ شَيْءٍ بَعْدَهَا فَلَا تُصَاحِبْنِي if I ask if I question you if I double doubt you another time do not accept me to stay with you قَدْ بَلَغْتَ مِنْ لَدُنِّي عُذْرَا Subhanallah, a lesson here for teaching is when you are a teacher like Al-Khadr, he made Musa put the punishment for himself. He didn't tell him that if you don't do so and so, I will stop. But he made Musa put the punishment for himself. And then they will go the third time and Musa will question him. And then in Ayah 78 he says, that's it we will we will have to split and I will tell you in I 78 I will tell you the details of what you will not be able to be patient of subhanallah a very beautiful uh, story and in the next three ayat 79 and 80 and 81 it talks about the details what was the truth about the ship and what was the truth about the three stories the lesson of this story and I know the uh, Juzo uh, 
15 in that ayah 74 but I didn't want to cut the story from the half so we passed the juz 15 little bit but the moral of the story here is this is the third fitna that the surah is talking about and this is the fitna of knowledge when you learn something and you think that you are knowledgeable or you think that you are so knowledgeable better than everyone else or you think that you are the most knowledgeable that's a problem you need to be humble and the most knowledgeable scholars they were always humble but the humbleness in knowledge is very tough and that is the fitna part that Musa subhanahu Musa alayhi salam fell for that and when he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he thought that he was the most knowledgeable another lesson from this story it's nothing wrong for the better person for the best Musa to learn from the least who is higher and ranking you think Musa alayhi salam or Al Khadr alayhi salam Al Khadr I say even alayhi salam some scholars don't think that he is even a prophet but I do believe he is a prophet based on many tafsirs okay but all scholars agree that Musa is higher than Al Khadr so now the higher can learn from the lower that is a great lesson from this story that we can learn and also the there is lots of lessons, but I want to highlight one more lesson. The three stories that that happened with Musa and Al-Khadr are three different types of knowledge. So, the first story is the story of the ship. The story of the ship that Musa saw something wrong, but he did not have knowledge about something happening in another area, because that's the knowledge of Allah that he gives to any people that he want. He, Musa knew what he knew from what he saw there, but he didn't know about the king in another place that will take the ship. The knowledge of something happening somewhere else. And then the young man that Al-Khadr killed, that was a commandment of Allah to kill him, and that what, what will happen in the Sharia that Musa will receive in the Torah that it's an execution for a young person who will not obey his parents Subhanallah Musa did not know about that that will be revealed to him later but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows that it's different type of knowledge it's the knowledge of ruling if you will and the third type of knowledge in the third story where it's the knowledge of the unseen or the knowledge of something that happened in the past in a different era or will happen in the future so Allah give wahi to Al-Khadr that about the people that did not feed Musa and Al-Khadr to uh, do good for them just because of those two orphans and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the past their parent or their father was a good man so they deserve to keep their treasure that he that is hiding under the wall so those are three types of knowledge so when Musa thought that he contained the knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala demonstrated very simple part of his ultimate knowledge among many other things but he just gave those three as examples of three different types of knowledge to Musa alayhi salam so maybe Musa will learn to be humble because he's about to receive even more knowledge from Allah through Torah and through the Wahi. The conclusion of these three um, stories in Surah al kah that we face a lot of fitnas and these are three types of fitnas in the next episode we will talk about the fourth and the last story of uh, Surah Al-Kaf and to conclude Surah Al-Kaf but I will leave you with this remember to always ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to avoid the fitna and to keep us out of the fitna in the hadith if you read the first 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kaf it will save you from the fitna and also there is less authenticated hadith about the last 10 ayat of Surah Al-Kaf but they are beautiful ayat. I encourage you to uh, 
uh, memorize the beginning and the end of Surah Al-Kaf and read them in your Salah. Beautiful ayat and don't miss out on these beautiful ayat from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And if you like this, uh, I will continue this tomorrow in the 16th uh, Juzo, inshallah. So uh, like, subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow, inshallah ta'ala.